So when we think of the word attached, we think obsessed. We think stage five clinger girlfriends, someone who will never leave no matter what. It's fair to say we've been on that end too. So attached to our girlfriends, wanting to spend day and night with them, until ultimately they leave us because, well, they need air. And sometimes we get too jealous and in our feelings when we really care for someone. Now, for so long because of those type of relationships I've been in, me personally have always been the kind of independent guy after. I force myself to only crave my own company, and if and when other girls come along, they are just adding a bonus value to my life. But this book says the complete opposite. So if you're like me, let's see if at the end of this, it can change both of our minds. Attached by Amir Levine teaches readers that being attached to our partners is a basic human need. And to be happy and fulfilled in life, we must find someone to be attached to. Being attached means also being dependent on someone. The attachment overall makes us stronger and more secure. Like I said, I don't agree with that 100%, but with every book I've read, I've always found some gems, and after all the facts, we can make an informed decision with what we want to do with our lives and relationships. To be attached or not to be attached? That's the question we'll solve today. Let's get started. Number one, we're wired to be dependent. You know the dating mantra, don't you? Make him chase, let her come to you, pretending you don't need him or her, and keep yourself busy so you don't grow dependent. That's a wrong assumption though. Many dating advice books are based on the wrong saying that we can function equally well on our own. But that's, well, wrong. Amir Levine cites John Bowlby's work and says we have a genetically programmed need to be with someone. And that has nothing to do with how much we love ourselves or how fulfilled we are. Once we get attached, codependency kicks in automatically. However, that doesn't mean we become dependent and weaker, quite the opposite. With the attachment, we grow stronger. Number two, attachment systems keep us wired together. The attachment systems are a pattern of emotion and behavior that brings us close to our loved ones. It's like when a mother leaves a baby and it won't stop crying until the mother is back. The same thing happens with adults and their romantic partners. All our pattern of emotion and behavior we utilize to get in touch with our mother as children or to our partners as adults are called protest behavior. The author says evolution shaped our attachment system and protest behavior because staying close to our loved ones help us and our children to stay alive. The paradox, dependency makes us stronger. When we have a solid attachment with our romantic partner and we know they are there to support and care for us, we become stronger. Imagine this simple analogy. A solid relationship for humans is like a solid foundation for a house. We can reach out for the stars and go out in the world with more confidence. We feel more secure in taking risks and being more vulnerable. And the opposite is true. If we are insecure about our partner, our relationship wastes all our energy and fills us with worries. When we feel more secure in our relationships, we feel more confident in ourselves. A solid relationship allows us to take on more risks. So the key here is to be independent find the right person to be dependent to. The four types of attachment styles. 50% are secure, 25% are avoidant, 20% are anxious, and the rest fall into a disorganized category with unhealthy traits from both. Let's see what type of people you've been dating. Anxious. These people get attached too quickly. They have a very hesitant attitude. They are afraid to speak up for the fear of creating distance or rejection. They are what you call the five stage clingers. They have fears of abandonment, always have mixed emotions. They often say things they don't mean. They always feel like something's wrong with them. They are the type to say, in the last five minutes, you never said you loved me. It's important to note though that if your partner provides all the security and reassurance, anxious individuals will drop most of their insecurities. That's why anxious individuals are best with secure types. So what's a secure type? Secure is naturally warm and loving type people, confident type that don't believe in games. They enjoy intimacy, not afraid of being hurt. They are ready to love 100% whether they fail or fly. They treat their partners well. They have a give and take mentality where if the partner can't put as much as them, well, then they can go. They are good at separating thoughts and feelings. Which brings us to the last one. And to be honest, after reading this, I'm pretty sure I fall into this category. Avoidant. These are what I like to call jaded. They have their guards up from previous relationships, they want to be close but feels uncomfortable with too much intimacy. They are detached from their own emotions, and they have the fear of getting too close. They will usually end relationships too soon, and they are unaware of their thoughts and feelings. They have an ideal true love they never meet. They always feel like there's something wrong with the partners they're with, and as a result, tend to be less happy and satisfied in a relationship. You know, those strong silent type, 
that girls always wonder why they never talk about emotions. An example of this is like a girl saying, I love you so much. And then me saying, I love you too, just give me some space. So now that we know the types, how do attachment styles develop? It's a mix of all influences. Genres, life experience, and how our parents raise us all contribute to determine our attachment style. Studies suggest that it's not true that avoidants don't feel any emotions. Their attachment reactions still work under the hood, but they're just better at repressing them. Here are some signs you are an avoidant or dating one. Professing not being ready to commit, but staying anyways. Focusing on their partner's imperfections. Reminiscing about an ideal ex. Flirting with others. Moving away when things are going great. Going into impossible relationships like long distance or keeping secrets. And avoiding physical closeness. The sad thing is, once avoidance break up, they can sometimes see the truth in how good the relationship really was. That's pretty sad. So here's some good news. Secure individuals can date with both avoidant and anxious people and help them overcome their limitations, as long as they can stay secure. Anxious with avoidance is the worst and it's very common. While there are less avoidance than secure, they are more often on the market because they have fewer long-lasting relationships and they bounce back sooner. So they go back into the dating pool much quicker. Judging by these, what type of attachment do you think you are? Comment it down below. So how can we apply these techniques today? Number one, learn your attachment. The example we went over today should be clear, but if they aren't, there's attachment quizzes online. Notice what type of attachment your partner has. Unless you're both secure, it'll make you understand where most of your conflict stems from. Again, go get them to take the quiz. Date with attachment in mind. If you're single, look for a partner with a complimentary attachment style. Ahem, <laughs> secure or nothing. Unless you're secure, ready to fix all the broken hearts out there. Make changes in yourself. Understand your limitations and move towards a secure style as much as you can. For me, after reading this, I realize that I'm an avoidance and I would love to turn that into secure. Ask your partner to change. Explain to your partner attachment style and what it means for your relationship. Look for a good relationship. Don't be ashamed to need a great relationship. That's what human biology is all about. We're instead about how to find a great boyfriend or girlfriend and how to be a great person. And that's all for today. If you got value from this video, like it, and if you have any interesting comments, comment down below. And if you want more videos like this, subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you did feel like supporting this channel in a huge way, there is a link down below to buy me a coffee, which I would love because that's the fuel I use for these late night videos till 4am, working on content for you. And that's all for today, thanks for watching, and let's continue to move in silence.